Here's a look at some of the most disgusting food Ramsay had to endure on Kitchen Nightmares. In this restaurant right here, well, let's just say safety wasn't exactly a priority for them. <laughs> with the culinary gangster. Be careful how you approach me. What the f going on here? Around the food, they send it back. Smell it! I feel awful, I feel awful, like I feed my daughter from here. <laughs> Kitchen Nightmares is no stranger to people absolutely butchering every health and safety standard out there. I don't think I'm making any waves by saying that. But these kitchens were so bad, they had Ramsay reconsidering his decision to come back with a new season of the show in the first place. Yep, these are the grossest kitchens we've seen so far in season 8. Alright, let's see what's going on over at Basque 46 in Woodland Park, New Jersey. So, this gastropub ran into trouble just six months after throwing its doors open to the world. The restaurant is owned by Steve and Sandy the power couple who had been together for more than two decades, running bars and other joints all the while. After a string of successful business ventures, the couple were looking forward to kick off their biggest restaurant yet, but unfortunately, their house of cards came tumbling down. While Sandy spent all of her hours at the restaurant desperately trying to get things back in order, Steve chose to hide in his so-called office instead of, you know, trying to fix things. But the blame didn't lay squarely on his shoulders. Because here comes the real failure, I mean, man, of the hour. You're with the culinary gangster. Be careful how you approach me. However, when Ramsay showed up, viewers were quick to notice how Chef Bobby's gangster facade started to crumble. So, who's the real gangster here, huh? Ramsay had to dig deep and bust out the patience of a saint just to last two seconds near this guy. But here's the real truth of the matter. Tensions were so high that it left Steve's health on the line. My investments are, are, are blown away. I put over a million dollars into this place. I don't want to go bankrupt. Steve was sweating buckets, literally drowning in business expenses, and questioning his life choices. But now, let's talk about the kitchen. There, Chef Bobby was the only one who called the shots. Watch the temperatures on them. Every steak was messed up yesterday. Because you're aggravating the shit out of us. What a chef to get over the kitchen. The dude loves spending money, but guess what? No one was keeping tabs on where the dough was going. So it shouldn't come as a surprise that this is how Steve saw him. Chef Bobby is the kitchen nightmare. Steve, it comes with fries, right? Kitchen don't even talk. It's one thing to deal with difficult owners, but it's another thing entirely to deal with an arrogant chef. Ramsay definitely had his hands full. And things were already off to a terrible start with the QR code at the entrance. So no menus? No, just the QR code, yeah. We don't have menus. Right. This QR code does not exist. They redirected customers to a website where they had to practically go through a maze just to get to the menu. Because who'd want to make things easier on their customers, right? What's more, for a restaurant who claimed everything was homemade and authentic, the mac and cheese was loaded with fake as hell cheese sauce. I wouldn't call anything with cheese whiz in it my signature anything. Ramsey's disbelief was palpable. Onions are raw, the flavor's terrible. And they're saying it's a signature cheese sauce, so it must be homemade, but it tastes like... So Ramsay arrived at a conclusion. Management was clueless about basic business knowledge. And to make things worse, accountability was out the window. Come to me and give me the review, man to man. Oh, now for the reason we're all here. The inventory was rotten. In the freezer, the nightmares inside the thing were straight out of a horror movie. What is this with Bobby? He's earning more money than you and your wife put together. Yes, he is. A hundred and, grand. And that, and that kills me. The salary for an exec chef in this area, uh -huh. 70 grand tops. But he's not even delivering 50% of what you're paying for. Yep, that's a frozen chicken swimming in a tub of batter, all on its own. But wait, there's more. Man, that chicken must have stunk to high heaven for Ramsay to have reacted like that. 
not even the fruits or veggies were spared from the aura of decay sitting over the place. And well, Ramsay was left with no other option but to shut down the restaurant, for obvious reasons. And then, it was time to lay down the law. Ramsay ordered them to clean up their act, literally and figuratively, and the whole team needed to step up and face the music. This, this is where your money's going, right here. Meanwhile, Steve finally realized it was time to take charge of his business. I can't start to help you guys if you're not prepared to help yourselves. With that, Ramsey and his squad revamped the patio and added a fresh new menu to liven things up around the place. It was small, simple, and dynamic. There's gonna be no more wasting money on oversized portions here, thank you very much. During the relaunch, people were digging the new flavors, especially the chicken wings. Those tacos look great. Thank you. The way this kitchen is functioning is night and day. Thank you. Early start. But Bobby was having a complete meltdown, which I'm sure absolutely made Ramsey's day. Seven all day. Oh, my life. Slammed right now. And I just, you don't understand, it's just a lot. Rapido, rapido, rapido. But despite the rocky start, they pulled through and they ended the night on a high note. Ramsey left them with some words of wisdom and encouragement, all wrapped up in an ultimatum. Prove yourself in 30 days or pack your knives. As for Bobby, well, some things never change. Middle of dinner service. I want to see if we had a good start. The problem now, the wheels are falling off and Bobby's reverting back to his old ways. Banging food out and sadly he's not communicating, he's just shut down. But we've barely even waded into the shallows here. Because what went down at Bel Air Diner? Well, if you know, you know. Either way, the siblings running the place, barely even speaking to each other, definitely wasn't putting their best foot forward. But Ramsey was here, aiming to return the place to its former glory as the hottest spot in Queens. But the only thing that was on the menu was... Uh, hold on, my joke is definitely somewhere in this phone book of a menu. Seriously, how many items were on there? Ramsey lost count, and he wasn't even halfway through. Right, appetizers, homemade wings, page three, we're just on the cellar bar. It's like an encyclopedia, this thing. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, there is one thing a diner can never go wrong with, a solid cup of joe. But what Ramsey got just wasn't what he was expecting. Jeez, Louise. And, well, the food didn't do them any favors either. The tortellini were store-bought, and the lobster, which was supposed to be fresh out of the tank, was raw, mushy, and just rancid. It is. That lunch was shocking. I mean, really bad. Oh, that well. The lamb wasn't looking like any lamb Ramsay had seen before, and the fries had mysterious black bits in them. Ramsay was so upset that he decided to skip dessert and get down to business right away. Did that end up being a mistake? Well, you tell me. Cal came over for a reality check, and Peter, um, the dude was MIA. And, well, once he did show up, Peter had his own justification for never showing up. I don't feel like I'm respected as, as a, a brother. Are you unappreciated here? I feel I am, yes. But they had to put petty things like that aside and start working towards reviving the business. Or things were going to get pretty hairy. Tonight is both of you running this place. I want to see it in operation, okay? See you shortly. Cut to the dinner service, and Ramsay was shocked. The chefs couldn't even dish out a simple burger. God. This is not a f***ing joke. That's ice cold and it's f***ing raw in the middle. These guys need to wake up. But while that train wreck of a service was rolling along, Ramsey decided to let them stew for a bit and go inspect the basement in the meantime. Whether or not him skipping dessert was a mistake, going down into that hellhole of a basement definitely was. Brace yourselves, because what you're about to see is genuinely that disgusting. Fans of the show just haven't been able to let the topic go ever since the episode aired. This was a place where produce went to die. There was stuff that had been there for weeks, not days. And to make things worse, there was absolutely no logic behind the way things were stored. <coughs> like, honestly, it was a legitimate death trap. 
they should have been handing out hazmat suits to anybody who walked by on the streets, let alone dared to walk into the restaurant. But Ramsey put it best, calling the place a ticking time bomb. Now, did you see the chicken? It was just casually chilling in that nasty, slimy water like it was no big deal. And those meat trays, wide open. And who knows how long they'd been sitting there exposed to the elements. But the oil, oh boy, the oil. Ramsey wasn't kidding when he said it was a ticking time bomb. The place could have gone up in flames at a moment's notice with all that grease caked up in there. So Ramsey had to act fast before they literally blew everybody up. All off. All off. Shut it down. That's gotta be the worst. It was time for the brothers to take responsibility. You can't just keep passing the buck and expect things to magically turn around all on their own. At this point, the fate of the restaurant was at stake. Ramsey took the opportunity to make that abundantly clear. The practices down there are shocking. And I'm talking produce that is gone. Weeks gone, not days. The place was quite literally their family's lifeline. It was time they paid more attention to what had been going on there for all their sakes. Smell it! I feel awful, I feel awful, like I feed my daughter from here. <coughs> Ramsey wasn't gonna leave without setting them straight first. He asked the brothers to bury the hatchet and work like a team. The dream was to pass on their legacy, but it seemed like they were losing sight of it. We're building this business three decades ago. It was your dream to pass this on. Ramsey then decided to show them the ropes of how a real well-oiled restaurant runs. And to do this, he took the brothers over to Times Square to show them how things should be working, efficiently and effortlessly. And hygienically, let's not forget hygienically. Fast forward a bit, and the diner had a whole different vibe. A retro look, making the diner shine. The decor was fixed. The menu was trimmed down, thank God. And Ramsey kicked things off. It was time to rock and roll. You $18,000 Senesso espresso machine. However, during the dinner service, the kitchen hit a roadblock almost immediately. And Ramsey wasn't thrilled. <laughs> What's going on here? It's raw. Hey, it's raw. Finally, Peter stepped up, and Cal handled the front of house, eventually managing to finish strong. Generation. You want something else? I can get you something. Giving mum and dad a well-earned retirement. Not a bad start to a whole new story, eh? Anyway, we've jumped from New Jersey to New York so far in this video, so how about we jump back to the good old Garden State again? Let's take a look at this golf course joint in the drink, run by George and Solange since 2017. On the outside, the joint was pulling in a crowd of up to 80,000 golfers. But you wouldn't know that once you walked into the actual place. If, uh, you can find it, that is. Where the hell's the sign? In the drink. I'm in the dark. Is, is this it? It's a gloomy vibe all around in the decor. There was no decor, actually. I was just admiring your patch. My renovation, you like that? That's do I like it? What do you think? It looks stupid. Oh, that's a first. As for the food, it wasn't taking home any awards, not by a long shot. It looks like he had given up, and to make things worse, the co-owners were clueless about the place's finances. You see, George might be a nice guy, but he wasn't the best boss. He was hardly around and cared so little about what was happening in his own restaurant, he may as well have not been there at all. Meanwhile, Nadia, the unsung hero, did everything she could to keep the ship from sinking. All right, so when Ramsey walked in, and trust me, it took him a while to do that, he felt lost. There were no signs, nothing to point him in the right direction. Oh dear. <sighs> this place looks bleak. He sat down for a taste test, and this is where the actual drama began. The chicken was too dry, and the quesadilla was hard to swallow. But this was the worst of them all. We're on the food. They send it back. Oh my God. But I'm not even done yet. Caesar salad, bland. Burgers, overcooked. I didn't even think it was possible to be more disappointed, but 
here we are. Meanwhile, the staff was just watching the meltdown unfold. It was like a train wreck they couldn't look away from. So Ramsey had been around this place for over an hour, and there was still no sign of George. Nobody knew where he was at, but turns out he'd been chilling in his office the whole time. Any news of the owner? Yeah, so I just texted George, and apparently he's been here in his office the whole time. And when they finally met, he had to get him on the same page real quick. The best thing about this restaurant? Yeah. Is the service. Great. Food was terrible. <laughs> but George was in denial. I mean, how bad could it be, right? But Ramsey was having none of it. How can you say that? I mean, we do have a good food. Where is the good food? It was time to show the man how to run a business. He came up with a genius idea of having a drink cart on the golf course. Those carts are cash cows, some making up to a cool two grand a day. But oh boy, George was clueless about the potential gold mine he was sitting on. But in terms of the drink card, George definitely doesn't pay as much attention as needed. This viewer seemed to get the hint, and he knows exactly what to have on those cards. Wraps and sandwiches. The ultimate filling finger food for the hungry golfer. I hope you're taking notes, George. Anyway, Ramsey was back at the restaurant, ready to see how the place functioned during a busy dinner service. I, for one, was wondering how they were planning on actually getting butts in seats in the first place, but guess they figured it out somehow. George claims that he was the expediter on most nights, but you've got to see how his staff reacted to that claim. Here, most nights expediting, my jaw drop. That is a complete lie. Methinks we have a liar amongst us. George's wife was the real power on that front. Meanwhile, the food going out was all wrong. The sliders were too salty, the chicken not cooked, and the salmon may as well have still been alive. Soon, the kitchen was drowning with orders, and the ticket times were completely off the charts. When the food started coming back to the kitchen, Ramsey lost his patience, and George's so-called expediting skills were almost non-existent. He's just pulling them and putting them, and I had to take mine out from underneath all the tickets. Multiple. The night ended in a failure of spectacular proportions. Ramsey shut down the kitchen, and the customers were sent packing. And who had to face the brunt of it? Carlos, the overworked chef. Yeah. I've removed Lyco Carlos from the kitchen. He was beyond burnt out right now. George definitely wasn't taking the blame. When Ramsey confronted him, he simply lost it. You yes. don't understand. You're not listening. I don't understand. You're not listening. But hey, 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 Ramsey came back with a plan. He had a new trick up his sleeve. And he was going to hit the golf course again. Of course, with the food. Yeah, the on the golf course and really maximize on potential food sales. <laughs> These carts could bring in half a mil a year and George was sitting there in disbelief. What's more, after the crew worked their magic, the place went from looking like a funeral home to rivaling a legit country club. And the menu, finally, finally, pretty good. Have a beautiful clubhouse restaurant. We need the foods to be in keeping with the restaurant. No more boring combo platters. Ramsey brought in the big guns with honey glazed wings, sliders, burgers, and chicken Caesar wraps. The taste test went off without a hitch, and the kitchen was ready to rock it. Then came the big night, where they needed to put that food in front of real customers. George was playing waiter, but you could tell that the dude had never worked anywhere near the hospitality industry before. The dude just needed to sit down and shut up, in my opinion. Meanwhile, the kitchen was rocking it. Thank goodness for that. In the end, Ramsey left with a strong message for George. The man needed to trust his team, delegate, and embrace the change. It was time to turn things around. Fast forward a bit, and in the drink was swarmed with customers. George was finally able to settle a few debts, and Nadia, now the manager, was running the show like a boss. As for Chef Carlos, he was living the dream with some well-deserved days off. And Ramsey's recipes? Well, I don't think I need to tell you how good his cooking is. It's one thing to make Ramsey angry, but it's another thing entirely to make him sick. 
Oh yeah, I'm talking about some of the filthiest restaurants I've ever seen, led by chefs and owners who just didn't give a damn. And this restaurant in Plainfield, New Jersey, without a doubt takes the number one spot. Yeah, it had to be Blackberries. With barely any customers showing up, the restaurant, owned by Shelly Winters, was in such bad shape that the business was at an all-time low, and closure was imminent. And what was the biggest problem? Well, this. The macaroni actually fell <laughs> Yeah, as usual, it all came down to the food. Now, when Ramsey arrived, he quickly sat down for a tasting, but he just wasn't impressed. Just like someone shot on my plate. It's dry. Ramsey had ordered smoked pork chops and expected them to be delicious, but what he got instead looked like. Well, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. A pile of shit on a plate. Things got worse when the chitlins came in. The dish looked so plain that Ramsey had to actually pray before digging in. And when he finally took a bite, you have to see his reaction. Ugh. Chitlins. He definitely doesn't look happy, I'll tell you that much. But hold on, where is he going? Toilet, excuse me. I knew they'd come out quicker than they went in. Damn, I guess even Ramsey has his limits. If I was the owner, I would have died of embarrassment. But she somehow found the entire ordeal funny. Meanwhile, poor Ramsey was having the worst time of his life. Oh, this check is in Paris. <laughs> Dear. Honestly, maybe them closing down instead of calling Ramsey over to help would have been for the best. But what happened in this next restaurant was even worse. As you probably know, Ramsey usually finds the grossest stuff in either the storage room or in the basement. But at Dylan's, it was a totally different story. As soon as Ramsey arrived, it was the first thing he saw. Let's sit at this table, shall we? Yeah. Okay, good. This American Irish restaurant, which also served Indian cuisine because, you know, why not, needed a health inspection immediately. The place had more flies than customers, and there were napkins thrown all over the place. Apparently, hygiene was the least of the owner's concerns. And don't even get me started on the food. It was probably the worst Ramsay has ever seen. There's meat in there. Um, that one's got meat in there. It's not vegetarian. It tastes like lamb. So the problem at Dylan's was they served you more than you bargained for. And I don't mean in terms of quantity. You see, Ramsey had ordered a vegetarian dish, but what he got instead was lamb. And it wasn't even halfway decent lamb. Yeah, had it been for anyone else, Muhammad would have found himself in some serious trouble. If a particularly litigious customer showed up, it'd have been a slam dunk of a lawsuit. But hey, he was probably safe because, you know, zero customers and all that. But the next dish was somehow even worse. Ramsey ordered some beef buna, but you have to see what he was served instead. That is not a piece of beef. It was lamb. <laughs> Ramsey was so pissed, he was struggling to find words to describe the situation. He finally understood that there was something majorly wrong in the kitchen, and so he decided to confront the chef. But what he found in there was shocking. What he says that uh, that lamb is probably the old lamb. You serve me old lamb? Oh yeah. At this point, Ramsey was regretting his decision to come over. But the worst was yet to come. When Ramsey went in for a deeper inspection of the kitchen, you won't believe what he found. What is that? I don't know what it is. You don't know? Moldy. That is, quite frankly, the worst hamburger I've ever seen in my entire life. God, these were my fucking potatoes for lunch. And that wasn't even the half of it. Hey! Look at that! Look! Cockroaches. Holy shit. I mean, it's, it's, it's not even a pepper. It's rotten. And 
Yeah, so if you want food poisoning, head on over to Dylan's. But what happened in this next restaurant was somehow even wilder. So Grasshopper in Carlstadt, New Jersey had definitely seen better days. Obviously it's dead tonight. Just go home, okay? As far as why the restaurant is failing. But Mitch and Maureen Sandler, the owners, were struggling to keep the place together after the customers stopped showing up. When Ramsey arrived, he was all business. After all, how bad could the food be, right? Surely they'll serve decent food this time, right? Well, turns out it surpassed Ramsey's expectations, but not in a good way. It's like somebody's dropped sliced onions into boiling dishwater. Yeah, things kicked off on a bad note. The soup was so bad that Ramsey felt like he was drinking piss. What followed next only made his experience even more bitter. Cold congealed gravy. Now, you've seen Ramsey go red, but this dish was so bad that his face went pale after he ate it. And after one look into the kitchen, Ramsey was on the verge of passing out. Can okay, you see that there? Blood. Blood from where? From the meat. meat. Blood from the meat and the mozzarella sticks. These guys actually refried frozen deep fried chicken. That's just the height of laziness. And don't even get me started on how unhealthy it can be. To make things worse, Ramsey then discovered that the owner had no idea when the fridge was last clean. Well, that pretty much explains the state of the chicken tenders he found. Slimy. There's a chicken come later. The chicken comes like that. Look how slimy it is. Look how slimy it is. Uh. Okay, I think I'm done with Grasshopper now. E editors, cut the footage. E editors, cut the footage, please. Whew. Okay. So, yeah, Ramsey was disappointed. Serving food seasoned with bacteria will certainly get him that way. And this next restaurant wasn't any better, since they almost got Ramsey to throw up. So we're heading to one of the oldest restaurants in Lancaster, California. They say old is gold, but Casa Roma was better off being sold. You see, owners Nyla and her son Jeremy Christian didn't need much help in running the business into the ground. While they tried to keep a lot of their mistakes under wraps, when Ramsey arrived, he found a whole pile of garbage under his seat. Safe to say the place needed some deep cleaning and fast. But when it came to the food, Ramsey was in for a shock. Fat. The oil was literally dripping out of the sandwich he ordered. For his sake, I hope Ramsey's got a good insurance policy when he visits the States, since I think he'd get a heart attack just being in the same room as that sandwich. As for the pizza, well, for an Italian restaurant, they had no idea how to make a decent pie. Unfortunately, the dough's raw, so thick. It's like wallpaper paste, raw. But the pantry was where things got really bad. From rotten veggies to open buckets of sauce, it was an absolute travesty. But what really stole the show was the meat segment. This is outrageous. Look at it. It sticks to the f***ing hand. It's that rancid. So imagine, you order a simple hamburger and this is where they get the meat from. Yeah, no thanks. But somehow there were still more atrocities to find. That's just over three months old. Jeez. At this point, Ramsey was beyond disgusted. The meat was legit three months old, and the fact he actually ate it was finally beginning to hit him. And a few minutes later, he couldn't hold it in anymore. <laughs> Yeah, me neither, chef. Now, while Casa Roma was one hell of a restaurant, I can assure you what's coming next will give it a run for its money. Located in Harrison, New Jersey, what is it with all these nasty New Jersey restaurants? Jeez. The Spanish Pavilion was run by Jerry Fernandez, his mom, Balbina, and his brother, Michael. Now, you must be thinking, since there are three people managing the place, everything must be going well. 
Well, you know what they say about too many cooks. And that adage could definitely be extended to the food, since when Ramsay ordered his first dish, it was a next level disaster. It just looks like lobster was dead before they cooked him. And do you remember that infamous lobster tank where lobsters were feeding off their dead brethren? He's dead. A dead lobster. And he's gone. Is he? No. Yeah. That was a Spanish pavilion trade secret. So after seeing the horrid condition of the restaurant, when Ramsey was offered some desserts, his response wasn't much of a surprise. It's very kind, but I've lost my appetite. Thank you. Well, I'm glad he took the hint and stopped himself from putting himself through the torture he'd endured so far. And it was a good idea too, because what he found in the walk-in fridge was disgusting. From unlabeled meat to enough chicken to last a lifetime, this place certainly had plenty to go around. But the true horror was revealed when he checked the other fridge. Look, dead. Decomposed, soft, dead. Yep, more dead lobsters. And no, they weren't just dead, they were decomposing right in front of him. Yeah, the less said about this place, the better. But I'm sure you've heard about this next place. Remember the belly dancer turned restaurant owner Rishi? Well, everything looked bright and dazzling on the outside of Prohibition Grill, but when it came down to it, Ramsey was disappointed. Mm, that's just slop. Horrible, nasty, loose. And things just kept going downhill from there. His next order was pan-fried oysters, and usually they taste a bit salty and creamy. But this time around, well, let me have Ramsey describe it. So he's managed to take a delicious tasting oyster and turn it into something that's cake and cornmeal. Yeah, so the oysters were like five days old. And when it comes to food, it's impossible to fool Ramsey. And he made it a point to share his disappointment with the chefs. Disgusting. Hell. Yeah, he was so dumb with the place. But that didn't stop him from inspecting the kitchen a little more. And that's when he came across some cornbread just lying around in the pantry, totally out of place. But the real problem was the gravy that the customers were being served. And when Ramsey took a bite, he totally wished he hadn't. Uh. God. <laughs> if a basic gravy made Ramsay sick, imagine how awful the rest of the food was. But this wasn't the only time Ramsay came close to needing to be airlifted to the nearest hospital. You see, Bonaparte's owned by Sue Ray was one hell of an episode. And the head chef, Tim, was single-handedly responsible for driving away their customers. I mean, one look at his kitchen and you'll know why. Right. Yeah, Tim was struggling to keep things together. And when it came to the food, the taste was just as awful. This is really worrying. A head chef who can't even taste his own food. The very first dish Tim made for Ramsay came out burnt. But that was only the beginning. Despite the terrible first attempt, Ramsey really wanted to try Tim's signature scallops, but he probably wished that he quit while he was ahead. <laughs> it's gotta be sick. Ramsey quickly started to feel his stomach turning, and a deep sense of unease gripped his whole body. And before long, the inevitable happened. You know <laughs> He's only gone and given me a rancid scallop. Get him a drink. No, I'm starting to understand why he decided to take a decade-long hiatus from the show. Anyway, I know Ramsey has had some pretty nasty stuff in his life, but nothing comes close to what he had at La Frite. So this restaurant, owned by Andre and his son Alex, had one major issue. But despite all the signs, they failed to recognize that their main problem was their food. Yeah, vinaigrette dressing is so strong. Yeah, they couldn't get even a simple salad right. So that should set the tone for Ramsey's next order. Oh. 
salty food crepe not only looks like a pile of vomit, but it tasted like it too. First of all, it wasn't even a crepe. It looked more like a pie. And it was cold around the edges to boot. No wonder Ramsay spat it out. But that reminds me of another restaurant. Something similar happened in Thousand Oaks, California, which is home to Sushi Ko, a Japanese restaurant run by Akira and Lisa. Akira was no stranger to the restaurant business. He had years of experience as a sous chef. But when it came to the business side of things, all that experience meant nothing because the place was a disaster. And a lot of it sadly had to do with the food. A tale as old as time, I'll tell ya. Are you guys wearing hats for service? Uh, no. Nothing at all? No. Man, miso soup is a classic. How could they mess up such a basic dish? Not to mention they serve the soup cold. God, even I'm offended and I'm not even Japanese. But the next dish was somehow even more appalling. That would have been my cue to leave the place. I mean, come on. Hair. Really. But Ramsay was curious to find out what else they would serve at the restaurant. And so he decided to stick around for a little longer. But I never expected he would order the one dish the waitress asked him not to. But at the same time, it was inevitable, you know? I mean, you can't not press the big glowing red button that says do not press in big bold letters, right? Anyway, the waitress was so taken aback that she actually wished him luck before he tried the dish. And then, finally, the long-awaited dish arrived. And here comes the moment of truth. Uh, he was probably wishing he took the waitress's advice. It was so bad that, well, I don't think I've ever seen Ramsay do this before. <laughs> Seriously, what the heck is a sushi pizza anyway? It had to have been some kind of a joke, right? But hey, let's look on the bright side. You see, you Ramsay learned an important lesson. Next time the server warns you not to order something, you better take it seriously. But hey. I know you all are clamoring for some more season eight content, and I'm spoiled for choice when it comes to more modern nasty restaurants. Yeah, I'm talking about the first drop for season eight, the Bel Air restaurant in New York, Queens. Probably shouldn't come as much of a surprise if you've seen the new season. Run by brothers Cal and Peter, the family business had put more distance between them than actually pulling them together. And when Ramsey entered the picture, he couldn't have expected what was coming. So there he was. And the first thing he ordered was a basic coffee, but even that wasn't up to par. And well, dish after dish, it didn't get any better. Oh, feel good. That's about as creepy. No matter what he tried, Ramsay simply couldn't stomach it. It actually came out faster than it went in. Like I said, over the years, Ramsay had learned his lesson, and he realized it was better to spit it out now than throw it up later. As for the basement, well, I've gone into great detail about that particular hellhole in one of my earlier videos. And if you missed it then, make sure to check it out because you're not gonna wanna miss exactly how nasty it was. But to sum it up, the place looked like a scene out of a horror movie and a pretty realistic and scary one too, not a shitty B movie with rusted, broken oven doors with some weird liquid leaking out of it. It definitely wasn't a place I'd wanna be trapped in. But if you thought it couldn't get any worse, you're wrong. Because when Ramsey checked out the meat fridge, he couldn't believe his eyes. What the f is that? Here's it was like there was no end to it. Marinated chicken. Oh my god. I mean, how hard is it really to at least try and clean it, huh? And when it came to the chicken, what Ramsey found straight up ended service for the day. Even the chicken's frothing at the mouth, and it's dead. Frothy chicken. Those words shouldn't exist in the same sentence, unless that sentence is delicious chicken served alongside a frothy beverage. Anyway, despite the decade long gap, Ramsey was so overwhelmed that he eventually, well, I'm sure you know. <laughs> <coughs> Ah, just like old times, huh, Ramsey? 
Now, Ramsey is currently on a mission to rescue restaurants that have hit a dead end after the pandemic, so I can only sit back and pray for his health and his life while I'm at it. These are the times when chefs really put the nightmares in kitchen nightmares for their customers. And this chef right here almost made a lethal mistake. Yeah, I'm talking about Mama Maria's in Brooklyn, New York a joint venture with Sal's Pizzeria. Both the joints were cruising smoothly until their son, John Esposito, assumed control in 1990. As the years passed, it started to go down. You don't have that kind of volume of sales. You see, John wasn't exactly a savvy businessman, and his kids seemed to treat the restaurant like their own personal playground. And to make matters worse, the Esposito family's business seemed to be stuck in the 90s, and Ramsey was immediately put off by it. A ripped awning didn't exactly help their situation much either. Oh, it's ghastly. Holes everywhere. Once inside, he met Fabio, the general manager, who spilled the beans about John's destructive tendencies. Turns out, John was next door, tossing pizzas at Sal's. However, he blamed the decline on increased competition. Ramsey knew there were more to the troubles here, and when lunchtime rolled around, he was about to experience it firsthand. He first placed an order for tortellini di patate, spaghetti and meatballs, and a margarita pizza. Classic Italian stuff, right? How hard could it be? Well... Spaghetti and meatballs. Margarita, please. Okay. Thank you. Wait, what? Freezing fresh pasta. Maybe they were trying to serve food they had made in the 90s in order to stay period accurate? Anyway, then the desserts arrived. That mold on there, can you show that? No, the butter's on top, so it covers that. Mmm, moldy cakes. Honestly, though, they're really setting me up for these 90s jokes way too well. So are we supposed to, like, put a fresh one every day so we can throw it out? Are you kidding me? So here was the situation. Rotting desserts on display and frozen, tasteless tortellini. Joe from MasterChef would about have an aneurysm if he got anywhere near this place. That aside, Ramsey sniffed out more trouble as he discovered an overwatered, stagnant plant. <sighs> oh, that's disgusting. Mm, nothing like having that dripping on your food to enhance your dining experience. Top tier service right there. But the disastrous service wasn't over. The meatballs were practically made of rubber, the pizza was an oily mess, and John, when confronted with criticism, backed up with facts, mind you, threw a tantrum. So why I'm here, if no one's caring? Okay. Please? Now, this is the part where they really messed up. During the dinner service, customers found meat bones in vegetarian sauce, and nope, it wasn't a pretty sight. What's that? A bone. A bone. I'm a vegetarian. John seemed like he didn't really care, and his recklessness showed in the business. That's what makes it bad. Joe, just clarify something for me. We could possibly kill them. Kill someone. The customer looked like he'd pass out at any moment. But did John take responsibility? Hi, this is Sal's Pizza I need an ambulance. The customer's not feeling well. Oh man, that's a one-star Yelp review waiting to happen. But in order to try and salvage the mess, the restaurant was shut down, with Ramsey confronting John about... Well, everything. But what Ramsey found when he checked out the freezer was absolutely horrifying. Oh, this is a joke. Look at that. Oh, come on. Something, something. That food was probably bought in the 90s. Something, something. All right, I'm done beating the dead horse now. Ramsey then urged John to let go of the past and reinstated a sleek new sign with modern decor and a revamped menu. We got stunning turquoise walls. That gives that nice, vibrant pop. Hopefully they turn things around for the better from there. But here comes a restaurant which had definitely seen better days. Shelly Winters, the owner, once had a thriving catering business, thanks to her mother Mary's retirement fund investment in the restaurant. But soon, Blackberries, a soul food joint in Plainfield, New Jersey, seemed to lose its soul. If you ask me, using up their entire retirement fund to open this poor excuse for a restaurant was a bold move. 
And now, my turn to be bold. Make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. I've got a ton of cool stuff coming, and you definitely don't want to miss it. And hey, you can also access some crazy behind-the-scenes moments and win some cool prizes along the way just by clicking this tab right here and becoming a member of my channel. Alright, back to it. The decision to use that retirement fund backfired real bad. Daddy put the check in the bank this afternoon. Oh, okay. Despite it, though, Shelly was convinced that Blackberries had it all. Great decor, great food, great location, but the customers and staff begged to differ. So, great according to who, Shelly? The problem is Shelly is in denial. She thinks that the decor is amazing. They saw her as a control freak in denial, a horrible combination. And as a result, the place was drowning in over $200,000 of debt. When Ramsey arrived, he came face to face with a disco ball nightmare, with records dangling from the ceiling. He then met James, the general manager, and Mary, the baker. And surprise, surprise, Shelly and James were engaged. Nothing like a dash of workplace drama to spice up some soul food, right? Anyway, Ramsey ordered collard greens, pork chops with mac and cheese, chitlins, and red velvet cake hoping for a soulful experience, probably reminiscing of better days with Mama Sherry. But the meal started on a sour note. Dry pork chops, overcooked mac and cheese, and microwaved leftovers. And well, check this out. Just like some on my plate. That's like playing Mozart on a kazoo. You lose like everything good about it. What's more, the collard greens were soggy and the chitlins. Oh, the chitlins. <laughs> yeah, they had to pray before eating them. And, well, that compelled a bathroom visit from Ramsey. Quite literally. Despite it, though, Ramsey braced himself to face the red velvet cake. And his reaction was surprising. Wow. To the end. After the horrible experience, Ramsey met the kitchen staff to lay down the truth about the lunch disaster. So, I just had an embarrassing lunch. Brutal honesty or just a normal Ramsey reality check? Either way, things were about to get spicy. Returning for dinner, Ramsey spotted a mouse, and chaos ensued. Ramsey was taken aback when Shelly blamed him for planting the mouse. Oh, what is that? Bloody hell. Anyway, after the rodent drama, Shelly wanted to shut the place down herself, but Ramsey wasn't willing to give up. But she was willing to leave her customers hanging. You out of here, I'm out of here. Excuse me, go. Pizza ovens and walks. I don't know, neither of those screamed down south to me. Anyway, to fix the issue, Ramsey introduced a fryer and a South Bend stove, bidding farewell to the walk. But Shelly wasn't pleased with the changes. Let's get one thing straight, okay? Can you please work on ticket one? Yeah. Funnily enough, she had emotional attachment to the walk, which was a twist nobody saw coming. Cut to the relaunch, and the new system started well, but Shelly reverted to old habits, practically sabotaging the kitchen. When things started to fall apart, Shelly retreated to her office and refused to face the music. Well, this owner needed more than a makeover to turn things around. But here comes an owner who lost something important along the way. Passion. I'm talking about Sushi Co. in Thousand Oaks, California, a restaurant owned by the husband and wife duo Akira and Lisa Hate. Japanese restaurant called Sushi Co. Sushi in California, huh? Not exactly super creative, but if it's good, it's good, I guess. Still, thanks to his undying spirit and hard work, Akira, who was once a sous chef at the restaurant, climbed the culinary ladder to become the owner. But now, the family business was on the rocks, losing $15,000 to $20,000 a month. And the Hatay couple's marriage was hanging on by a thread. Credit card debt is hundreds of thousands. But when Ramsey arrived, he was puzzled by the lack of customers. He was also puzzled when he was asked to try the sushi pizza. Yeah, you heard that right, sushi pizza. I'm not gonna even try to justify it. However, during his tasting, he encountered miso soup that was more salty than hot, not really putting the appetizing in 
appetizer. Miso soup doesn't taste very fresh. It's not actually very hot. If that wasn't enough, a little bit of hair snuck its way onto one of his plates. Were they even trying back there? Sounds great, huh? Well, well, well. Now it was time for the sushi pizza. And how did it turn out? Sorry. And the crowd goes mild. But wait till you see what Ramsey found in the kitchen. From reused skewer sticks to a chef blindly agreeing to some really dumb things, Ramsey was surprised how the place was even open. Proper fresh fish, and it doesn't actually happen. What's more, the restaurant had ruined more than just their finances. When Ramsey talked with Sammy and Hana, Akira's children, they had so much to share. It was an idea for us to come help and give them a break if they needed to, but not to be here. Now, coming to the dinner service, there were more problems in store. From burn skewer sticks, hopefully those weren't the reused ones, to customer complaints, to a malfunctioning fryer, and a broken fridge being held together by bags of ice, Ramsey felt that Sushiko was better off shut down. I washed the stick and everything is clean. What's the problem? After the dinner disaster, Ramsey confronted Akira, frustrated by how blasé he was in his response. And this is when he learned that Akira's spirit was broken, and he was in dire need of a confidence boost. I can do it this time. I can restart again. Gordon hooked them up with new gear, and Akira finally cracked a smile seeing the new stash of fridges and fryers. Filled with renewed confidence, Akira rocked the kitchen on relaunch night, dishing out fresher fish than ever before. And now it was time for the Kitchen Nightmares crew to wave their magic wand, and overnight, the joint received a makeover, with a new look and an upgraded menu. Talk about turning things around for the better. Anyway, up next is Jay Willie's in South Bend, Indiana, a barbecue joint run by a trio, husband and wife duo Rick and Trisha, and their friend, John William. Wonder where the name comes from. He's gotta be the spark, he's gotta be the fire. He can't just be back there. Uh. Now, barbecue in Indiana isn't exactly traditional, so depending on where the pitmaster got their stripes, it could go either way. Delight? or despair. As for Jay Willie's, it turned out to be despair. Initially successful, the restaurant started losing its sizzle, with Rick and Trisha living three hours away and trusting the day-to-day -to, -day to John, who left no stone unturned to drive the business into the ground. The jar. The standards have declined so far that I, I'm not even sure we can revive it. When Ramsey arrived, he was unimpressed by the outdated appearance and a sign that seemed desperate for attention. Maybe it was the owner's cry for help? Look at that ghastly sign at the bottom. Whenever a sign's flashing, it means desperation. Either way, the flashy pictures on the menu and the decor failed to impress Ramsey, who ordered a loaded baked potato pizza, beef ribs, and a pulled pork cheese bow. Wait, uh, run that back again? A pizza loaded with potatoes? Ramsey isn't too hard on me because this type of food wasn't my idea. Oh, wait till you see it hit the table. Holy mackerel. That's the strangest pizza I've ever seen. Meanwhile, Ramsey couldn't help but take in the gloomy atmosphere. It's had a thousand buffaloes walking all over it. The restaurant's condition was so dire that Ramsey actually got a priest's blessing before digging in. Yes, What's yes. That? Would you mind just blessing my food? Oh, yeah, oh would you? sure. Yeah. But that blessing fell on deaf ears since the food was terrible. Like, the pizza was drowning in ranch dressing. It's sort of wallpaper paste. So the pizza sucks. As for the rest of the meal, well, let me give Ramsey the honors. Yeah and they were serving this slop to their customers on a daily basis. Well, it wasn't surprising that the kitchen was found to be filled with frozen and canned ingredients. And what was John's excuse? They had no head chef on board. And when Ramsey confronted the owners, he got a front row seat to Trisha blaming everything on John. 
Anyway, Ramsay stayed back to observe the dinner service, and he was appalled by the frozen pizza ingredients and cheap cuts made at every corner. It's frozen. Holy mackerel. And, of course, most dishes were returned to the kitchen by unhappy customers. Yeah, I want something I'm gonna eat. Okay. What have we got here? After the disastrous service, the staff admitted that they were embarrassed, blaming it all on their dwindling paychecks. I have mouths at home to feed. But Ramsay was prepared to face the worst. He decided to inspect the fridge, which, on Kitchen Nightmares, is never a good idea. Tomatoes. Soft. Rotten. From rotten vegetables to blood-soaked meat, this place was in desperate need of a cleanup. Peppers. The whole box is rotten. The following day, Ramsey met the owners at a church and delved into their troubles and financial woes. With deeper insight, he brought in fresh ingredients and taught the staff how to whip up a new burger special. However, once the orders started to pile up, the relaunch collapsed and customers were left unhappy. And the disappointment combined with the long wait is too much for one customer to bear. Although Ramsey questioned the owner's commitment to change, he didn't fail to revamp the place. A reduced menu and homemade barbecue sauce were introduced, aiming for a fresh start. And what do you know? Despite a few hiccups, the customers loved the food. And the owners were hopeful they'd be able to turn things around. Almost like Ramsey knows what he's doing. But here comes the most arrogant owner of all time, Joe Nagy. You see, when Ramsey set his sights on Mill Street Bistro in Norwalk, Ohio, he wasn't prepared to come face to face with the most difficult owner he has ever had to deal with. Amy and Sammy, take a hike. We've got the new hotness. Bought a livestock ranch and decided to open Mill Street Bistro. Anyway, Joe was a livestock ranch owner, and he believed his bistro complemented the ranch, envisioning it as some sort of fine dining. However, the staff claimed he was delusional, cutting corners while claiming it was all fresh, scratch-made food. What's more, Chef Tom let Ramsay in on a little trade secret. The food was more like going from freezer to table, not farm to fork. As customer complaints rose, servers Rebecca and Amy resented Joe's treatment and the quality of the food that they needed to serve to them. However, oblivious to his role in the restaurant's woes, Joe thought the lack of customers was his only problem. But let's not forget that he didn't even encourage the locals to dine at his place. Now, when Ramsay arrived at the bistro, he was confused about the fake fire and questionable name tag sported by the staff. But wait till you see what they were serving. Ramsay ordered an array of dishes, but was visibly shocked by the high prices, especially for steak. While most of the meal was disappointing, when Ramsay gathered the staff, the poorly executed French onion soup arrived, further setting the tone for a disastrous meal. Jesus, belly melted. Jesus. As the drama unfolded, Ramsay was so disgusted that he left the restaurant hungry. But was Joe bothered at all by it? Absolutely not. He continued to claim that his elk was top notch. But I don't see anything on the oysters. Nice. Well, I got it in there. Returning for dinner service, Ramsay remained unimpressed, prompting Joe's denial and a heated exchange for the ages. Possibly one of the wildest confrontations I've ever seen on the show. And I'm asking for fucking, fucking responsible. Help. I'm asking for fucking help. Then wake up. Ramsey was witness both to Joe's shortcomings and explosive arguments, and there was not a shred of doubt in his mind. The owner, and more importantly, his arrogance, were responsible for the downfall of the place. You shouldn't even be in the kitchen. Yeah, get out ahead! Get out ahead! You put Let's it all finish together. it! Ramsey was desperate to show Joe the truth. And so, he arranged a staff meeting where he urged everyone to vent their frustration. Little did they know that Joe watched from an adjacent room, secretly listening to everything they had on their minds. They told me every one of them was a piece of shit, and he had to go down the street to eat. Wow. Exposed, Joe apologized. Ramsey then introduced cheaper dishes and prepared a burger, challenging Joe's resistance to change. Cut to the relaunch, though, and Joe and Ramsey were back to locking horns in yet another heated argument. However, Ramsey was determined to prove Joe wrong. 
He unveiled a new menu that emphasized fresh food to earn Joe's confidence. Burger than you would do all year, serving loins, serving chops. Correct. What's more, Ramsey went one step further and introduced chef Brian Goodman, who is ready to help set up the kitchen and interview a new chef for the job. To Brian Goodman. Chef. All right. Oh, nice. <laughs> As the community embraced the changes, the relaunch night arrived with efficient kitchen operations and delighted customers. Just eat this <laughs> I think the mustard bistro finally has a chance to make it. In the end, Joe faced the reality that he shouldn't be in the kitchen if Mill Street Bistro was to succeed. But, well, I guess some things just don't change. Because soon, Joe is back to his old ways, and nope. Despite all the years that have gone by, he still hasn't forgiven Ramsey. So these were some of the times when customers got sick on Kitchen Nightmares. Maybe not explicitly, but people were definitely getting sick. But if I missed your favorite moment, don't forget to share it in the comments below. But hold on a sec, if you thought this video was crazy, then don't forget to check out this next one right here. It's even crazier.